Hey, Bertie. What you want, Leroy? They're going to elect another mayor in Summerfield. You think Uncle Mort will get fired as water commissioner? Mr. Gillsleeve fired? Nah. They wouldn't fire him. Would they? Tonight in the sixth of a new fall and winter series of Wednesday evening broadcasts, the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. We join the Great Gildersleeve and his friends in just a moment. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you tonight by Parquet Margarine, that wonderful margarine made by Kraft that millions prefer because it always tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. If you live where colored margarine is sold, you can now get yellow Parquet Margarine already colored and ready to serve in that wonderful new Flavor Saver package. Each golden quarter pound is individually wrapped in Flavor Saver aluminum foil to seal freshness and flavor in, keep odors and staleness out. No fuss, no mixing, just unwrap and serve. In other states, get Parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. Remember, Parquet is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Get some tomorrow. see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve. Our water commissioner is a little late for breakfast this morning, but things are humming anyway. Leroy is occupied with his pancakes, and those lovebirds, Marjorie and Bronco, are occupied with each other. May I put sugar in your coffee, honey? Thanks, honey. Of course, you don't need sugar. You're so sweet anyway. Oh, Marge. <laughs> Bertie, isn't that murder? (laughs) Cream sugar? Thanks, honey. You're welcome, sugar. Oh, mush. What's that, Leroy? Pass the mush, honey. Leroy, we're not having mush. Are you kidding? There's mush all over the place. (laughs) Sugar, syrup, honey, and mush. This is the sweetest family. (laughs) Well, good morning, little family. Uh, What's tickling Bertie? Mush. What? Don't pay any attention to him, Uncle Mort. Uh, Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Bronco, you've been living here six months. You don't have to reach across the table and shake my hand every morning. I like to be friendly, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Well, be a good friend and pass me the pancakes. (laughs) Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, Marge, honey, I won't be home for lunch. Oh? Our new club is having its first luncheon downtown. New club? That's right, Mr. Gildersleeve. We've just organized a new civic club. We're going to do Summerfield a lot of good. Isn't Bronco wonderful, Unky? He's president. Oh, brother. Yes, indeed. Fine boy. Bronco, what's the name of your club? The Junior Thinkers of Summerfield. The Junior what? Thinkers. That's what I thought you said. (laughs) And since you're the president, I guess you're the biggest. Leroy! (laughs) Well... Uncle Mort, do you know what Bronco and the thinkers are going to do? No, my dear. I can't say that I do. Tell him, Bronco. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, we're going to think. Ah? The way we see it, Mr. Gildersleeve, the people of Summerfield aren't giving enough serious thought to the way this town's being run. Well... Confidentially, Mr. Gildersleeve, we're meeting today to decide whom we're going to support for mayor. Well, there shouldn't be any doubt in your mind about that. We want to re-elect Mayor Twilliger. He's a smart man. He appointed me. Let's support the man who supports us. I mean, uh... <laughs> Well, all we want, Mr. Gildersleeve, is to see that the best man's elected. Well, that's to Williger. Unk's the best war commissioner, too. Yeah, thank you, my boy. It'd be hard for people to imagine anybody else being water commissioner, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, thank you. <laughs> By George, you young fellows are pretty straight thinkers. <laughs> Shake a leg, Leroy. I have a water department to run. I have to find my books, Unc. How keen of you to drive me to school. Yeah, happy to do it. Watch it, Unc. 
Mr. Bullard's backing out of his driveway across the street. He wants to go first. Oh, that Bullard. What a neighbor. Well, I started backing out first. He stopped. Guess he doesn't want you to cut up his new Cadillac with our old cement mixer. Now, Leroy. He's honking at you. I'll honk back. Leroy, don't do that. He's hard enough to get along with. You want to see? Oh, hello, Mr. Bullard. I want to see you. He's getting out of his car, Unc. He looks mad about something. He's always mad about something. If he raises his voice to me just once... You want to oh. He raised his voice, Unc. Slug him. Uh, Leroy, keep out of this. Well, nice to see you, Mr. Bullard. Nice of you to come over. Gildersleeve, this isn't a social call. It's business. Business? What happened to the water pressure this morning? Oh, that. Uh, well... I was all lathered up halfway through my shave, and the water cut off again. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> Half the time when I turn on the faucet, nothing comes out but a light breeze. What do you propose to do about this ridiculous trickle we're getting from the water department? Well, I'm on my way to the office. You should be on your way out of office. Watch it, Bullard. You'd better watch it, Gildersleeve. Oh, boy, this is keen. Why did the water cut off this morning? Well, maybe they're working on the water main someplace. Someplace? You don't even know. If I were Terwilliga, I'd have you out of there so fast that it'd make your head swim. But, Gildersleeve, you are a nincompoop. That did it. Bullard, if Leroy wasn't present, I'd make you eat those words. I'll leave. You will not. <laughs> right to school. important man in town thinks he can insult the city officials. Well, I insulted him right back. He can't hurt me. I'm not running for office. The mayor appoints me. You say, I wonder if he'll appoint me again. You think I'll stop by his office and make sure. You! Anybody in? I've been in Gildersleeve since nine o'clock sharp. Well, yes, yes. Well, <laughs> I would have been at nine sharp, but... I've been talking to one of our customers about ways to make the service better. Good idea, Gildersleeve. We all want to be on the job. There's an election coming up, you know. Oh, I know. But you don't have to worry about a thing, Mr. Mayor. I don't, eh? No, indeed. In fact, Mr. Mayor, I've done considerable campaigning for our re-election. Uh, I mean, yours. Well, uh, the administration needs all the support it can get, Gildersleeve. There's a new civic organization in town that has me worried. Oh? Yes, the uh, Junior Thinkers of Summerfield. Uh, don't you think it? Mm. <laughs> you don't have to worry about them. Oh, you don't think so? No. Mr. Mayor, lend me your ear. Uh, what is it, Gildersleeve? Guess who controls the junior thinkers? Who? My son-in-law. <laughs> oh, now, uh, Gildersleeve. Yes, Mr. Uh, I, I know you've worried occasionally about being reappointed water commissioner. Me? Gildersleeve, lend me your ear. Yeah, what is it, Mr. Mayor? You're as good as appointed. I am? Uh, so you've told your son-in-law whom to support for mayor. <laughs> Gildersleeve, you're quite a card. Well, Mr. Mayor, in my deck, you're the ace. <laughs> well, the deuce you say. <laughs> <laughs> Gildersleeve, you're clever. <laughs> Then do you know what happened, Judge? What, Leroy? Mr. Bullard called Unc a nincompoop. He did? Well, I'm glad I dropped over. Then what happened? Well, hello, Judge. Leroy? Hi. Hello, Gilda. Hey, what's this about a nincompoop? I was just telling the judge how you stood up to Mr. Bullard this morning. You bet I did. If you want my advice, Gilda, you'll try to get along with your neighbors. Rumson Bullard is a very important man. Someday he may go to the mayor about you. Yeah, a lot of good it'll do it. I've never been on better terms with the mayor. In fact, I was closeted with him in his honor all morning. Well, what were you doing in the closet? Hiding a few of the city skeletons? <laughs> all right. A change of administration could mean a change of water commissioners, you know. Oh, I'm not worried, Judge. Uh -huh. 
Pretty hard to change any administration these days. Uh, yes. In yeah. fact, uh, the good mayor has assured me of reappointment already. He has? Gildy, how'd you get in so good with the mayor? All I did was use my influence with the one group in town that can swing the election. What group could the water commissioner influence? The meter readers union? <laughs> Judge, I'll have you know I practically control the junior thinkers of Summerfield. You do? You bet. Bronco's their president. And they wanted to back somebody for mayor, so I threw my weight around. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Here's Bronco now. Hello, Judge Hooker. Well, Bronco, did you thinkers have your little meeting? We sure did, Mr. Gildersleeve. Great. The club followed your advice about selecting a good man. Hey, what did I tell you, Judge? But they didn't follow your advice about supporting Mayor Terwilliger. Hey, what did I tell you? Huh? They took my advice and selected the man that I consider the finest, most civic-minded man in Summerfield. Well, Bronco, I have done a few things for the city, but... Oh, oh, not you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Your neighbor, Mr. Rumson Bullard. Bullard! (laughs) Water Commissioner, you've turned off your own water. Great Gildersleeve returns in just a moment. It's fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. There's just one big reason why millions of women serve parquet margarine on their tables and use it liberally in their cooking. It's wonderful as a spread, as a seasoning for hot vegetables, as a flavor-rich shortening for everything you bake or fry because it tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. Yes, fresh, really fresh, always fresh. Parquet is made fresh from top-grade products of American farms. It's rushed fresh in refrigerator trucks to your store. It's sold fresh by your grocer. Every pound of parquet is flavor-dated, and grocer stocks are regularly inspected by Kraft men. That's why Kraft can positively guarantee to you that no matter where you buy or when you buy margarine, it will be fresh. Fresh. Really fresh. Fresh. Always fresh. Fresh. That's why it tastes so good. This better tasting, f- flavor freshing margarine tomorrow. Get P A R K A Y parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Our water commissioner assured his honor the mayor of the support of the junior thinkers of Summerfield, but they had thoughts of their own. They're backing the one man Gildersleeve fears, Rumson Bullard. Where does that leave our hero? Right in the middle, as usual. Uh, Nothing to trouble. How do I get into these things? What'd you say, Yankee? Oh, oh, nothing, Marjorie. Nice of you to walk downtown with your old uncle this morning. Well, I couldn't pass up the sale at Hogan Brothers. We need so many things before the baby arrives. Yes, we have to get ready for the baby. Need any money, my dear? Oh, I think I have enough. You better take it while I have it. The water commissioner's well could run dry. Here, here's five dollars. Oh, gee, thanks, Anki. I'm sorry Bronco's club isn't supporting Mayor Terwilliger, especially since you told him they would. Anki, does that put you in a bad position? You never mean a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can explain it to the mayor, can't you? Yeah, well, I'll try. You run along to Hogan Brothers. All right. What'll I buy the baby with your five dollars? Buy him a book that somebody should have bought for me. <laughs> How to win friends and influence people. <laughs> well, goodbye, Anki, and good luck. Goodbye, my dear. Well, I hate to face Sir Williger. It has to be done. I think that yesterday we were such good pals. Laughing and joking together? Say, we're probably still good pals. We've had our ups and downs before, but he's always forgiven me. It isn't my fault that my son-in-law and the thinking people won't support him. You'll understand. Sure. What a fine little fellow. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Who's there? It's me. Yeah, I. It's Rock Morton P. Gildersleeve, your faithful lieutenant. <clears throat> No, Mr. Mayor, Your Honor, 
Don't look at me like that. I, I know I promised that Broncos Club would support you, but you know how unpredictable youth is. You believe that, don't you, Mr. Mayor? I won't vote for Bullard. I'm stuck with you. I mean, <laughs> I'm sticking with you, like we agreed. We did agree on that, didn't we? Mr. Mayor, say something. I'll say something, Gildersleeve. Get out! Out! You mean you're not going to appoint me water commissioner? Gildersleeve, I wouldn't appoint you dog catcher. Whoop! Where have I heard that before? <laughs> What can I do for you this morning? Give me a tall Coke, Peavy. Very well. Lots of ice? Just wrap the ice in a napkin, Peavy. I'll put it on my head. How's that? I just left the city hall. I've got a bad headache. Oh, the coming election worrying you fellows down at city hall? Well, no matter which way the election goes, I'm out anyway. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I thought you and the mayor were thicker than thieves. Watch it, Peavy. <laughs> we're not anymore. I had a fight with the mayor this morning. Well, you could be reappointed if your neighbor, Mr. Bullard, is elected. I had a fight with him yesterday morning. My, my. What do you think I should do, Pete? Well, if you're such a fighter, why don't you join the Marines? <laughs> I might at that. Or the Foreign Legion. No, I don't think you have to worry, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh? You've always run a good reservoir. You have a lot of friends. I suppose you noticed the mayor's poster in my window. Yeah, they're right by the rat poison. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I put that poster up to help re-elect the mayor and keep you on the payroll. Long may the water commissioner wave. <laughs> yeah, all right, baby, all right. And that's a little witticism, Mr. Gildersleeve. Water commissioner, wave. Yeah, I know, baby, and I rather like it. Uh, thanks for the support. Well, I believe in supporting customers because they support me. You're good for you. By George, I think I'll tell the mayor about you. It may help me. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve, you're not a customer. Here, you go right ahead. Mr. Peavy? Yes? Do you remember me? No, I can't say that I do. A few years ago, I used to come in here and read comic books. Alvin Beaver, remember? Oh, yes, yes, Alvin Beaver. Hmm, you've grown up, Alvin. Care to read a comic? Oh, no. Now I read thought-provoking books. I'm a junior thinker. What's this? <laughs> well, a thinking beaver. <laughs> <laughs> very good, Mr. Peavy. <laughs> That's very good. It wasn't that good. That boy's up to something. <laughs> Mr. Peavy, on behalf of the junior thinkers, I'd like to put a picture of our candidate for mayor in your window. I knew it. Now, isn't this a fine picture of Mr. Bullard? Look at that noble brow and that determined chin. He looks like fearless Fosdick. Uh, Peavy, maybe the young man doesn't realize you already have a candidate in your window. Oh, we're going to get rid of all that dead wood. Oh? How do you feel about the water commissioner? That lot of water log will go, too. Oh, Peavy, don't put up that poster. Well... Remember, I'm a good customer. Mr. Peavy? Yes, Alvin? We junior thinkers are 251 strong. And we're all shaving now. Well, I guess it won't hurt to put your poster up by the shaving cream. You, my goodness, Speedy, you can't support both candidates. You can't straddle the fence. Well, I wouldn't say that. Politics. Thinkers can sway PV. They're pretty powerful. All right, George, there's only one thing to do. Get Bronco and his junior thinkers to switch their allegiance to Mayor Terwilliger. Yeah. I'll appeal to him as a relative. Oh, Bronco! Oh, oh, oh Mr. Gildersleeve. You're raking the leaves, I see. Yes, sir. This is clean up here. <laughs> uh, Bronco. Yes, sir? About you supporting Mr. Bullard for mayor. Has it occurred to you that his election might affect people near and dear to you? I mean, uh, have you thinkers ever thought of voting for Mayor Terwilliger? I've given that a lot of thought, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm fond of you, very fond. 
But I can't support your boss. You can't? I sincerely think Mr. Bullard is the better man. And we in the Junior Thinkers Club have the slogan, Think the thought you think is right, then defend the thought with all your might. Think the thought you think is right, then defend the thought with all your might. You see, we think the city of Summerfield needs a change. So what if you do make the sacrifice? In the name of good government, you'll be a martyr. Yeah, but Bronco... Your head may roll, but try to see it our way. How can I see you without a head? <laughs> Yes, Bertie. Don't you feel well, Miss Gilsey? Terrible, Bertie. Yes, sir. Bad news from the political front? Yes. Yeah. Mayor Terwilliger hasn't a chance of being reelected. I'm through as water commissioner. Oh, Mr. Gilsey, you give up too easy. Oh, yes, Bertie. If I got pushed off the water wagon like you, I'd climb on the bandwagon. What are you getting at, Bertie? If Mr. Bullard's going to be mad, I'd polish apples with Mr. Bullard. Bertie. I wouldn't stoop to that. Yes, sir. If I was pushed off the water wagon, I'd climb right on the bandwagon. Hey, Bertie, please. Mr. Gilsey, you know what I'd do if I was pushed off the water wagon? Yes, That's Bertie. That's right. I'd climb right on the bandwagon. <laughs> oh. I wish it was that easy. Say, I wonder if it is that easy. I might just go over and have a neighborly talk with Bullard when he comes home. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I'll just take this easy chair here by the window and watch for his Cadillac. Hey. Uh. <laughs> the chair feels good. Sure. I'll just go over and have a little chat with Bullard. There's one thing sure. He can't get another man with my experience. Actually, I'm very fortunate. Water is all I know. <laughs> oh, eyes are tired. You better close them. <laughs> Might even take Bullard that gold-plated faucet the pipeline people sent me. <sighs> yeah, that's what I'll do. <sighs> Bullard will love this faucet. He's nuts about gold. <laughs> He can use it as a paperweight on the mayor's desk. You wonder why he doesn't answer the doorbell. Yes? Hello, Mr. Bullard. Oh, it's you, Gildersleeve. Yes, your neighbor. Please, please don't remind me of it. I'm about to eat. <laughs> and the only reason you're still my neighbor is that I couldn't buy your house. No, Mr. Bullard. There's no reason you and I can't be as close as, well... Mayor Terilliger and I used to be. Gildersleeve, what are you getting at? Well, when you take office as mayor, you look a long time before you find a water commissioner with my experience. So I thought I'd offer you my services. And this solid gold water faucet. Gildersleeve, after all you've done to me, how can you presume that I'd ever appoint you water commissioner? What have I done? One, you live across the street. Two, last year you backed into my Cadillac. Three, when I was painting my house white, you burned rubber tires and turned it gray. Yeah, well, I... Four, you ruined my petunia bed playing detective one night. But... Five... That's enough. You won't appoint me. No. I won't appoint a nincompoop. Oof. That word again. Now, get out. Yeah, I'll get, get out. I'll get out, Bully. Watch it. Let go of my mm. arm. Let go. Let go. My arm. Let go. Let go of my arm, I say. But, Mr. Gilsleeve, I'm just trying to wake you up. Eh? You what? Oh, Bertie. Mr. Bullard's here to see you. Is? Now, see here, Bullard. You can't throw me out. You're not even mayor yet. Gildersleeve, what are you babbling about? Me? Oh. oh. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bullard. I guess I was snoozing a little. Well, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Gildersleeve, but when I'm elected... I want to offer you the water commissioner's job. Eh? I am not ungrateful, Gildersleeve. And I know somebody had to convince your son-in-law and his junior thinkers to back me for mayor. 
Well, now, now, Gildersleeve, I know you're so close to the present mayor that you can't admit it. No, I can't admit it. <laughs> so, Gildersleeve, old neighbor, you're still going to be the water commissioner. Well, good old bullet. <laughs> no use giving him the gold-plated faucet. I'll keep it myself. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. When you buy margarine, the name to remember is Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. In states where colored margarine is sold, get yellow Parquet in its new flavor saver aluminum wrap. Elsewhere, get Parquet in the handy color quick bag or regular package. In any state, in any package, Parquet is the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. Get P A R K A Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Sure, hop in. Gee, people sure do crazy things at election time. Crazy things? What do you mean? Oh, Bronco and his flinkers running around town with posters. Mr. Bullard be a nice to you so you'll help him get elected. You be a nice to Mr. Bullard so he'll let you keep your job. Leroy, it's not that way at all. The junior thinkers is a fine group. It's a good thing for young people to take an interest in their government. Yeah, and as for Mr. Bullard and me, we're both grown men. Both too intelligent to suddenly start being nice to each other simply for the sake of politics. You watch the driveway, my boy. You're okay. Back out. Hold it, Aunt. Hold it. That's Mr. Bullard backing out of his driveway. Oh. Hello, Bullard. Hello, Gilsey. <laughs> After you, Bullard. No, no, you go ahead, Gilsey. I'm in no hurry. After you, old friend. No, no, no. You first. No, you first. Now, oh, for corn's sake, I'll walk to the library. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Gail Gordon, Stanley Farrar, Dick Crenna, Bud Steffen, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in again next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a secret for making dull meals interesting. Add Kraft prepared mustard to any meat dish, hot or cold, and see the difference. Hidden flavors pop right out, because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For remember, with any meat dish, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft Prepared Mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, listen next Sunday afternoon to The Falcon over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and hear The Falcon solve the case of the careless client. Laugh next with Groucho Marx. Three chances.